Governor Murphy, when you're ready. Thanks, Michelle. Uh, good evening, everybody. Thank you for uh, gathering on short notice. I'm honored to be joined by the storm crew, uh, the Commissioner of the Department of Transportation, Diane gutierrez scacchetti Superintendent of the State Police, Colonel Pat Callahan, and President of the Board of Public Utilities, Joe Fiordaliso. Uh, again, appreciate enormously uh, folks gathering on short notice. We haven't We've been doing a lot of COVID lately, but we haven't been doing a lot of storms. Uh, so we've got uh, the band back together, as they say, because we're tracking an incoming storm system, which has the potential for significant snow impacts across the southern half, especially the southern half of the state, with the greatest possible accumulations in a belt, if you can envision it, from Salem County running northeast toward Tom's River. The National Weather Service and the team has just gotten off a short while ago with them, uh, has Western Burlington, Camden, Gloucester, and Salem counties under, under a winter weather advisory. And they have Southern Ocean County, Eastern Burlington County, Atlantic Cumberland and Cape May counties are under a winter storm warning. Uh, some added accumul accum accumulations may maybe just up to an inch or two are possible across central Jersey where I am as we speak and into parts of the of northern Jersey. Let me just stop and say two things. Number one, uh, state offices will have a delayed opening tomorrow. Uh, those offices, unless you hear otherwise from us, will open at 10 a.m. And we will put in place a state of emergency sometime later this evening for the counties I just uh, mentioned that are under the winter storm warning. And again, I wanna repeat those counties, Ocean County, Burlington, Atlantic, Cumberland, and Cape May. Those are the counties that are under the warning. Uh, there will be a state of emergency directed specifically to those counties that will go into effect later on this evening. This storm should impact these areas through, at least through the morning commute and potentially much longer across the entirety of the day tomorrow. The Department of Transportation under Diane's leadership is prepared to be out to keep our roadways clear. They're partnering with their colleagues at the county and local levels and with our toll road authorities to get the jobs done. And by the way, I should say all of this is, uh, the plans are being put in place in the context of an ongoing pandemic, which is now at all time high rates of transmissibility. Uh, and so we're having to do this under COVID protocols. And as you can imagine, uh, normal staffing and normal manpower are impacted uh, substantially. The system may also bring with it coastal flooding, uh, particularly in those counties that I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, uh, especially Cape May up uh, through Atlantic to Ocean counties. And it will bring with it some sustained strong winds, which of course means the potential for power outages. The BPU under Joe's leadership has been engaged with our electric power providers to ensure their readiness. Of course, if you experience an out outage, report it immediately. If you come across any down wires, don't go near them uh, and call them in as well. As Joe mentioned to me a few minutes ago, one silver lining here is, is that this is not a statewide storm, at least as we see it at the moment which means we can concentrate resources. That goes for Diane's and Pat's energies as well. So here's the long and the short of it, folks. If you do not need to be out tonight, please stay in and let the road crews tend to their jobs. If you are out and come upon a plowing or spreading operation, please let them pass and clear the roadway. Please, please, please be especially careful in tomorrow's commute. Again, state offices delayed opening at 10 a.m. and folks, if you can, uh, based on who you work for and your working circumstance, and you can sit the commute out and delay that a little bit in the morning, uh, that's probably a smart move, not just for you, but for the whole operation. Pat will get into, us, into this, but the State Emergency Operations Center will be activated, uh, I believe at midnight tonight. Keep track and keep updated. I continue to believe the best all-encompassing place to go is ready.nj.gov. Uh, or through the state's official social media channels, including at NJGov on Twitter. This is the really the first significant storm of the season, and for this year, 2022, for sure. 
Uh, let's be safe and we will continually update you. Pat and I will be with you virtually tomorrow uh, with the Commissioner of the Department of Health, Judy Persichelli. I'm sure we'll have an update then. That's going to be at one o'clock. And if we feel like we need to get to you earlier or sooner, uh, we will not hesitate. With that, please help me welcome the Commissioner of the Department of Transportation, Great Leader Diane gutierrez Scacchetti. Diane? Thanks, Gov. Uh, yes, as Governor said, the DOT is prepared to fight the snowstorm that is impending. Uh, obviously, as we know it today, it's a very southern based storm um, and notwithstanding the impacts of COVID, uh, we have sufficient staff to help us both spread and plow. In addition, we have confirmed with all of our contractors and all of our towers of their availability for staff as well. Um, our pavement temperatures are pretty warm right now. So we're hoping that that will help us in terms of making sure the roads stay as clear and as safe as they can. Um, but I can only echo what the governor has said in terms of all safety precautions. The storm is anticipated to start very late tonight in the early morning hours. Um, if you have to be out and you see our trucks out there either spreading salt or plowing, please be mindful that it's easier for you to see them sometimes than it is for them to see you. Please be very careful. If you see any of our partners from state police, any of our towing operators, our emergency services providers, please slow down. Um, and if you can safely move over one lane, please do. Um, it is not a day goes by lately that we don't have someone hurt on the side of the road um, that is there doing their job. And we need everyone to help us to keep everybody safe so everyone goes home every night. The storm should be pretty quick moving. We think it, you know, by the afternoon, hopefully it will stop, but that will not end our road work. Um, our road work will continue. So we just ask everyone to be mindful, to take advantage of the governor's delayed opening and to make certain that if you don't have to be on the roads tomorrow morning, just give us some time to get things cleared out um, in the affected areas. And with that, Governor, I'll turn it back to you. Diane, thank you. Um, you know, we said this a lot in warmer weather when we had the crushing storms of Henri and then on a much bigger scale, Ida, that storms are coming more frequently with more intensity and less predictability. Those are three observations we made on the warm weather storms. There's no reason to believe that all of what I've just said doesn't hold true for cold weather storms as well. So we're giving it to you at six o'clock on Sunday night, January 2nd, 2022, as best we, as we can see it, as best as the National Weather Service can see it. Uh, but folks have to understand there's a lot more volatility with weather these days than there used to be. Um, and so just don't, don't get um, comfortable uh, inside of parameters that you may think or we may think uh, we can predict. Um, don't get too close to the line because the line moves, unfortunately, a lot of late in weather. Diane, thank you. With that, uh, let's turn it over to Superintendent Colonel Pat Callahan. Pat, uh, again, thank you for everything. Take it away. Thank you, Governor. Uh, just from a state emergency management perspective, we did host a, a call this afternoon at three with all of our county OEM coordinators, as, as well as our state emergency management partners, DEP, DOT, BPU, uh, health. Obviously, we have some sites open around the state. That Recording in progress. Remain open. Um, we will be, as you said, Governor, activating the SEOC, the State Emergency Operations Center, at midnight tonight and be offering situational awareness throughout this storm. Um, and I just, again, the uncertainty, there's that, that one area between Mercer, Middlesex, and Monmouth has some uncertainty to it. Uh, and, and to everybody's point so far, if you don't have to be out there, that's our ask to not be out there. Uh, the fact that we're able to work from home and remotely is a key piece of this as well. So uh, uh, our troopers will certainly be out there. They're, they're amongst that group that can't work from home, but we're, uh, we're certainly ready from an OEM perspective and all 21 OEM coordinators are uh, poised as well, Governor. Thank you. Pat, thank you. It's a rare uh, snow-related storm, at least in my far four years together, where the north and northwest especially isn't in the crosshairs. At least that's our current sense. Is that accurate? That is correct. Yeah, that's the southern as a 
as a Warren County resident, you know, I'm used to firing up the snowblower before anybody else. But, uh, you know, four to eight inches predicted across the south at a pretty high rate is, uh, you know, offers us all some concern. And that's why we don't we don't take it lightly and we want to make sure everybody's prepared. And again, if you don't have to be out there, uh, certainly don't be out there. Our our assets will be ready to go with snowmobiles and high water vehicles. Um, but hopefully we don't have to deploy those, Governor. And Diane, from your perspective, this is much more a road reality, given you just don't have, if the storm hits in the counties we think it's going to hit, uh, there just isn't a lot. Unfortunately, uh, it's something we want to change, but there's not a lot of rail density uh, in the southern part of the state in those counties. This is much more of a, even whether it's yeah. buses or cars, it's a road, road storm for you. It is, um, you know, the river line runs, will run through these counties, but at the end of the day, that's, that's for us a little bit less impactful than making sure we can still deliver bus service. Um, I've spoken with New Jersey Transit and they feel confident at, that they will be, at, they're at about 97% staffing that they'll be able to continue bus service for those, especially our frontline workers who must go to work regardless of the weather. Yep, well, well said. Thank you, thank you, Pat. Uh, Joe, um, you're backlit, which is appropriate given uh, we're, we're talking about power here. Uh, it feels like it's an Atlantic City Electric, JCPNL principally, and also some uh, PSC and G in there as well. But those feel like the ones that, uh, that are at the front of the line. Any color you've got, again, expecting winds, some coastal flooding, uh, any more color you've got. Thanks for your leadership. Thank you, Governor. And uh... <clears throat> I, I think you hit the nail on the head, and Pat also uh, did when you said unpredictability. And uh, I, I think that's one of the things that we're seeing as this event of climate change continues to evolve. And it's uh, very, very difficult. Uh, and, and under your leadership and, 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 and the fantastic work of Diane and Pat and their, their teams, um, we... we um, prepare for the worse because there is unpredictability. And uh, um, so we prepare for the worst and, and, and hopefully that worst doesn't happen. But um, winds are always a problem in any storm. And um, <clears throat> we, we're not expecting severe wind gust uh, with this storm, uh, according to the uh, utilities that I've spoken to, because they too get forecasts on a regular basis and, um, and, and so on. Uh, if it's a heavy snow and that heavy snow uh, just accumulates on the lines, that, that could be a problem. But we have the advantage, as you mentioned, Governor, the fact that it's a localized storm. It's not a statewide storm. And that provides us the opportunity. And the, I hate to use the word luxury, of, of really concentrating our efforts on the region that is being uh, directly affected. And uh, we're always used to the northern part of the state. Uh, Pat lives up uh, even more north than I. Uh, I uh, I'm in Essex. Uh, so we're, we're always expecting that area to be hit the hardest uh, with these kind of storms. But this time it's the southern part. So I just want to assure everyone that the utilities are ready uh, and uh, hopefully the amount of outages, the number of outages will be minimal. But if you do experience an outage, please let your uh, utility know. Uh, they don't necessarily know that your particular home is without power. So please let them know that so that they can um, move into action as quickly as possible. Also keep in mind that if the wind gusts are over 40 miles an hour, it's not safe for those workers to go up in a bucket uh, uh, to try to repair or, or to restore power. So please be patient. And uh, we want everyone to come through this uh, in one piece and uh, to uh, ensure that we ask that you be patient if you do lose power and hopefully we won't have a large number of power outages through this storm. So thank you, Governor. I think uh, that's probably the update we have here. 
Thank you, Joe. That last point's an important one. When I speak to the heads of these providers, as you do, I always say quickly and safely uh, to restore power. You, you can't, we cannot put the women and men up uh, in the air uh, in 40 miles. It's an industry standard of 40 miles an hour. But I'll tell you, 35 or 38 miles an hour is pretty nasty as well. So just, uh, we all got to keep these folks yes. in prayer. And by the way, the only person who lives north of Pata, New Jersey is Santa Claus. So he's, he's about got the whole <laughs> place, got the whole state covered there. With that, I want to thank uh, Diane, Pat, and Joe, and maybe ask Michelle. We'll t t t take time for a couple of questions. Let's keep them on topic. Pat and Judy and I will be together at one o'clock tomorrow. That can be free. It'll be virtual, but we can cover any topic you like. But tonight, let's keep this on topic if we can. Michelle, o over to you and thank you. Great, if any of the reporters have any on-topic questions, they just wanna raise their hand and we will call on you. While Michelle is uh, assessing that, again, I wanna repeat ready.nj.gov, state offices opening at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, Monday, January 3rd, uh, and state of emergency going into effect later this evening for Ocean, Burlington, Atlantic, Cumberland, and Cape May counties. We'll likely put a release out with exact timing on that state of emergency. And I should repeat one last comment. It's, we, we haven't said it, but it's probably an obvious one. Another reason why we're getting to you tonight, tomorrow is one of the biggest back to work, back to school days of the entire year. Uh, never mind that we're in a, in, a, in a pandemic and there's a storm. So that's another reason why we wanted to get to folks tonight. Michelle, back to you. Any? All right, Governor, it looks like you and the team covered everything and none of the reporters have any questions. Godspeed, everybody. Stay safe. If you can stay in tonight, please, God, stay in. If you can kick your commute tomorrow a little bit later and or work from home, that would be terrific as well. Be safe, everybody. Ready.nj.gov. We'll be back with you, some of us, at 1 o'clock tomorrow. And if we need to sooner, we will. Again, I want to thank Diane, Pat, and Joe. And Godspeed, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Governor.